Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny Greenleaf, season four, episode five, entitled Unwanted. I'll do a quick recap and also the review at the end. And trust me, you want to stay for the reviews. I got a few bones to pick, not only with the acting, but the writing. That's coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> we had the opening scene. Charity is in her room with her son, and she seems pretty psyched out at the fact that she's so close with becoming the AP, saying to him and chanting to him, Oh, your mommy can't wait to be, you know, AP and oh the stories and all the sermons I'm gonna share with everybody oh yes 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 I will and it just looks really weird but Grace walks in and she's already furious and she goes to charity and she asks why did you call Noah's home and leave that voicemail message and of course charity behaves as if it's very passive and I don't know what you're talking about and I just called him and I heard he was in town and just said that I thought that was a shame he didn't speak and him and I go way back and Grace knows, Grace knows that it's just a bunch of mess and you know the history that we have, you know the relationship, you know some of, some of the things that, that happened. Why are you doing that? You doing that led to him being kicked out of his home. And once again, Charity being very passive. And I, I didn't like the fact that now that's more dirt and more juice that uh, Charity knows now. She knows that he was kicked out. She knows that she might be breaking up a, a marriage because she rekindled those flames that were thought to be deceased in the past. And she says, well, how would I know? that that would disturb the household. I was just calling, I was just leaving a message. How was I supposed to know all of this? And she blows it off because she wants to confuse Grace. Like, why would I do a thing like that? Jacob is in his room and he's praying and talking to God out loud and he's telling him, thank you for igniting that fire and me having an interest in helping the homeless and want to, wanting to rekindle programs that help the less fortunate. Thank you for getting me going again and just guide my steps that I can go in the right direction and that I can do this right. Thank you for allowing me to find interest in that again. Me, while in the other room we have Carissa that goes into Lady May's house like you know a kid trying to ask their parents can they go somewhere mama uh, can I uh? <laughs> but you know Carissa comes into Lady May's room and she says I wanted to know if we can take the furniture when we move and Lady May is like, when you move, like, what's going on? And she tells her, yeah, you know, we get in the house and, you know, we got, we looking at a, a, a spot and we're going to move and we really want to know if we can take the furniture. And Lady May, said, Lady May says, like, when y'all moved last time, you took the furniture last time. Like, you know, get you a job, you know, with your job money, get you some more furniture. So what makes you think you're going to move again and take more furniture? And also a cliff note, when you took the last furniture, you were such in a hurry to come back. Y'all had to come back. Y'all had to hurry up and sell that furniture on eBay. So what you doing? <laughs> Carissa is just basically like, so I'm guessing we can't have the furniture. And Lady May is just looking at her like, you got to be kidding. You know, get you some money, get you some furniture on your own. And when you do that, take joy in getting your new furniture and decorating your new home because you're not getting this furniture too. Ren is helping the bishop look through old sermons, maybe to give him some inspiration because he is going to another church to preach for a Sunday, and that's more information that Corinne knows. She knows that he's going to preach at another church because technically he doesn't work for Harmony and Hope, so this is some information on the side. So if somebody wanted to come to Corinne and ask her what is the bishop doing, she would be able to let them know that. But she's helping him with all of that footage and so he can maybe get some some ideas or maybe be inspired to develop other sermons so she's helping him do that Phil tells Grace as they're passing that you know your brother submitted this request to go 
in front of the board and submit reasoning and evidence and basically plead his case about why his program for wanting to help the homeless should be considered by the board and all of the things that he can do in the community. And, and he's just telling her it's going to get shot down because, you know, Harmony and Hope, we pretty much have a mirror image to any ideas you could possibly have. So if we already provide it and we already have the funding for it, highly unlikely his ideas are going to be, you know, declined by the board. So, in other words, he might as well quit while he's ahead. Grace says, what is the big idea? You know, why is it such a battle? If somebody has a good idea and they want to present it to the board, what is the big idea? This is about helping people at the end of the day. So, what is the big issue? And Phil says, well, you know, that's just the way it goes. I'm just telling you, you know, basically, I don't want to get his hopes up for something and it's going to get declined anyway. So, AJ shows up to the church, but he's inside of Grace's office and Grace is shocked to see him there in her office because you got to remember, he, she's trying to keep AJ on the hush and hush, you know, the hush, hush, hush that he even exists. And he says, well, I'm here because I need some more money. And Grace is shocked because she's like, didn't I just give you a lot of money three days ago? And he's just like, well, yeah, I need more. She gives him what she has in her purse at the time, and he's just say, telling her, I don't see why you're getting upset. It's not like you don't have the money. And I'm like, ooh, what has AJ found out? Because clearly that's some foreshadowing to something that he knows, and she says, I'll put more into your bank account. Don't worry about it. As they're speaking, we have Phil that walks in, and he observes the young man that's in the chair, and he's like, so, hello, I didn't mean to interrupt. She's like, that's fine. That's okay. You know, basically, my help, may I help you? And he says, so, where's Corinne? She says, she's with my dad. And he's basically like, well, your dad doesn't work here anymore, so I'm guessing she took some time off. She's using, using her PTO. And Grace is just so up with it. She's just like, she's doing something for me. You know, wow. Like, what do I have to do to let you know that it's not so hook line and sinker every every time it has to be everything by the book every time she's doing something for me like wow and he has that very very uh detective look like i've got to know who this person is in her office because according to him if it's not on the schedule if he doesn't know if everything isn't monitored it's up to him to investigate who are people that i don't know Dante's girlfriend calls Zora while she's making a little saints activity with the little puppets and she asked her hey girl you know we had you know what are you doing we having this party I need you to come through you know everybody's gonna be here uh, because we just heard about something that's going on with Dante you got to get here I'm gonna send you the address girl come on over and of course Zora wanting to be in that group wanting to be accepted by peers her age she's excited about it and she can't wait to go Grace gets with her brother to sign documentation confirming that any debt that her father owed to the IRS is completed, it's done, it's all paid in full. And while she's doing that, she doesn't give any more detail in, in, in who the person is that she's inquiring about. She's like, but I have this information about this really good kid. You know, he has a record that was minor, but he really needs help in finding a job. You think if I send him to you, you can help him help him out with getting a job. He's like, of course, if you're saying that he's a good person and you vouch him for him, I'm all in. And she's just amazed by that. And it was cute how he says, you know, I'm doing these favor favors for you, but when I'm having a drink, I always say to myself, hmm, I know where to get a kidney. So in other words, I know that you're gonna owe me. So she's amazed about that. Charity tells Phil that I really don't feel right anymore about snooping on people and getting information and bringing it back to you and taking people down. I might have even hurt somebody's marriage. Just, I, I'm tired of doing this. And Phil being the deceptive person that he, he, that he is because he's used to it. They're used to taking people down in order to get what they want. They're used to doing, to doing work that is, could demean somebody's character to bring them down in order to take over their church or to take over their role. So everything that he's hearing is going in one ear and out the other. And all he's thinking about is, hmm, how do I get into Charity's head? And you could tell that he's thinking, you could tell he's leaning back in the chair and he's just like, 
hmm, I need to go a little deeper with this one because I really need her on my team to see what's going on. And he says, look, people's truths and all of these facts that we're figuring out, it's up to us to bring their dirt to the light because this is God's church and we must all make it known that their intentions are not good. So we're actually doing God's work. And Charity says, you know, if it's some dirt under a rock or something in the shadows, I won't lift that up and bring that to the light. That's just not my job. I'm not you. Bishop comes to Lady May and says, well, you know, Carissa came to me because she, when they move, she wants the furniture. And, you know, I just wanted to come to you because she said that she said no, and Lady May is just like, she came to you after I already gave her an answer and told her no, she couldn't have the furniture. She gonna come to you? I mean, like, what's, what's that gonna do? And he says, it's furniture. You know, having the tone as if, you know, we can we can buy more furniture. Like, what what is the big deal with you and the, with the furniture? And Lady May has this controlling uh, ambiance around her and energy of wanting to be in control of everything. She still is very angry and bitter and is just turning down every little thing that comes in her way or everything that comes in her presence. And Bishop says, you know, you're telling them no. And I don't know why you're telling them no, but I'm coming to you because I just want to share this information that she came to me in the first place. And I just want to know why you said no in the first place. So Lady May says, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to sacrifice and a lot of things that we need to do. If you want to give her the furniture, the agreement is that you don't go to be a guest speaker at the church on Sunday. And Bishop is just like, I'll go back and tell her that your answer stands. So in other words, quit trying to tell me what to do. Quit trying to make rules. Quit trying to make it seem like you're the general of the house and everybody got to do what you say, how you feel, when you want it, and how you want it. Bishop wasn't having it. Well, AJ and Grace's brother, they, they meet, and they're both giving very blunt answers about how they know Grace. AJ asked him, how do you know her? He says, oh, we go back. He asked AJ, how do you know her? And she's like, you know, I know, I, I know her from church. You know, not being truthful and how they know Grace, how they're connected. And he goes on and on to talk about Grace, how she's helpful with uh, helping people. I've even seen her take off her shoes and give it to somebody else. And the more he's going on to talk about Grace, AJ is sitting there as if he's been slapped in the face with disrespect because he's hearing all of these good things that she does for other people. But on his end, being the flesh and blood, she hasn't gone all out to help him. And he stops and he asks, where's your restroom? And when he paused like that, I'm thinking, is he going to the restroom to take drugs? Because he seems in and out of it half of the time. But he leaves. He, he goes. We're under the impression that he goes to the restroom. Lady May expresses to Bishop, I got an invitation to a national women's event in Washington, D.C. And you know what I did? I declined it because I needed to be here. My presence needs to be here. This was a great opportunity and I got the opportunity from Bob Whitmore. But I declined it, and me, 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 and this is what I, I've done because I'm staying here and I'm being in the presence. Even though my role is different, I'm making sure to be present here. And she's reiterating and she's restating these things to Bishop as if trying to pull him out of that engagement that he that he's, has agreed upon preaching at another church on Sunday. And you, you can just tell he's just so baffled by the fact that she wants to be so controlling. And he said the worst thing that he had to deal with was feeling unwanted. He has the gift to reach people, the, the power of script, scripture and sharing the word. And for a time in his life, with everything that's been going on with the church, he's felt very idle, that he hasn't been active, that he's not sharing his time talents and it's made him feel very unwanted and lady may gives her little shimmy as if you know you don't know about your past and things that you've done to me and bishop says i have yet to mention lionel i have yet to mention dirt that you've done in other words i'm trying to move on the idea was to move on but i can't even function without you watching my every move move so 
what, what do you want from me? Jacob is making his argument to the board about his program, about reaching the less fortunate. He's even stated that he's, he had a program that was very successful in the past and all they have to do is revamp it. And what he needs from the board is it to get approved for the funding to promote it more and to let people know that it is the investment. He also makes a statement that, yes, we have something similar with Harmony and Hope, but it's one thing to be involved with the people, to understand the people, and the way that you do an event here in one state could be totally different in another. So we've got to promote this. It's very important. And the board is sharing some head nods and they're saying some mm-hmm. And he looks like he's selling them on this idea. And of course, we could see the steam coming out of Phil's head because he is very cautious in how this is going to happen, how this is going to work. Because of course, he doesn't want to upset Mr. Bob Whitmore because this would look like a failure in his eyes and on his side because you let this slip through the cracks. This is one program that might be approved. Will it be another and then another and then another? And that will that be the domino effect of us losing harmony and hope? That is the energy that Phil is giving off. Like, man, I can't lose this battle and not viewing it as this is something that will help the church. This is something that will help the people. The energy from Bob and Phil is business, 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 and not the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. While he's giving his points, Jacob, he keeps receiving these calls from Zora and their FaceTime requests. It's not just a call. And Jacob, finally, as a father, he stands up and he's just like, I got to answer this call. I got to answer this call. He gets to the, to the door and Grace says, you know, what are you doing? You're making a good argument. You know, like, can you just ignore that call? And he's just like, this is Zora. Like, this is my daughter. Like, I got to answer this call. He goes into the hallway. He answers the FaceTime request. And it's Zora. And she's like, promise you won't get mad, but I need you to see this. And she shows him the video of them holding up a Confederate flag, obviously to do something for the flag, but you could tell it's the energy that's not right. We already know from earlier in the episode that Dante has already started drinking and seems a little tipsy and, and drunk. So as the day has progressed and now it's going into the evening hours, it's getting worse and the crowd is getting a little bit more hectic and this is a problem if you are a public figure. So Jacob tells her, I'm on the way and he leaves. Grace goes to talk to AJ at his apartment. And when she goes to speak with him at his apartment, he's so over it. He's tired of being treated like a secret. He's tired of the back and, and, and all the forths and promises that she says that she's going to keep and she never keeps them. And he says, I have better loyalty and I have better friendships and I have things that are given to me and taken seriously better by people that I've met in jail and random past buyers that I know than you. So this treatment that you're giving to me, I can do better by myself. I can find the money some way because, you know, this is something I'm supposed to be doing anyway. I'm supposed to be paying my own bills, right? So I'm done with this. Don't make me any more promises. Don't talk to me anymore. And as a matter of fact, if somebody asks me who I am or how I know you, I'm telling him, I'm not keeping this a secret anymore. And as he's walking out, Grace says, well, where are you going? He's just like, ain't none of your business where I'm going. Bye. Charity is having a nice dinner with Phil. And before the scene even starts, I'm already predicting that Phil has those ideas turning in his head to pull Charity back to get what he wants. And I was correct. In this scene, they're having dinner and Phil says, I want to share some information with you that nobody knows. Number one thing, and people that are very deceptive, they're setting you up for, uh, this is something that I'm telling you that nobody knows. Uh, I, in other words, this is to gain trust with you. And clearly I trust you and clearly I like you because I'm giving you information that nobody knows. This is the set them up to watch them fall process that I'm giving you all of this information that nobody knows. I'm trying to build up some type of trust, but all it's gonna do is backfire. And he knows that Charity is the putty in her hand. Just like someone being abused and the abuser, abusers know they're gonna go for the ones that have terrible self-esteem, uh, blah, blah, you get where I'm going with this, right? 
highly unlikely somebody that's of that way is going to go to a strong, independent, headstrong person. I'm just giving an analogy. I'm giving an idea. I'm not saying that's for everybody. That's, that's the, the poor, poor, poor quote description for everybody. I'm just trying to paint you an idea that Phil's character knows how to approach charity. There we go. <laughs> so as he's speaking with her, he says, something interesting about me is, well, I'm Bob Whitmore. And she laughs and says, well, what do you mean? And he says, you know, all those sermons that you read, the books, the verbiage, all of that, that's me. I write all of that. I do all of that. And she's confused by that and thinking, well, why would you do all of that for him? And he said, at first, I didn't mind. It was something that I was assisting with because I, I, I enjoyed doing it and I, I loved writing the sermons. But then it turned into a money-making machine and it made me money. And he understood and saw that as a business opportunity, and he kept them on the payroll. Bob kept them on the payroll. And before he knew it, he was creating everything, and he was the actual voice and the vision, vision behind Bob Whitmore. So this pulls Charity in more and being interested, like, tell me more. And she's putty in his hands and got it back just like that. Marissa talks with Lady May. She walks into Lady May's room and Lady May is just like, what else do you want? Are you coming back to ask me for the furniture again? Like, you know, what do you want? And Carissa says, you know, everything that I wanted to say, I put it in this letter and I was going to give you this letter. And she's like, oh, you're going to give it to me in a letter. Like, oh, here we go. And she says, you know, I'm not even going to give you the letter. I just feel better if I say it to you face to face. Since I've known you, it's always been static. It's never been right. You know, even with my own mother, Carissa explains that it was always a competition. It was always something like that. And I thought that... With you, it would be a little different, but it's never been that way. You are deceptive. You say one thing and you do another. And looking back on it, everything that's happened with this church, grace, faith, everybody, it boils down to you. And as a viewer, I'm sitting there like, oh, so it ain't Grace's fault no more? Okay. <laughs> she didn't pick somebody else to put the blame on. Uh, 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 all right. And in that scene, Lady May's character is so... Of course, she's disturbed by what she's hearing. And there's a little scuffle and they're holding each other's hands and they're going back and forth sharing these words because Carissa is being pushy with what she wants to say. And Lady May is kind of pushing back like, you know, I had to hit you in the face and they're really trying to control themselves. But it, it goes back and forth until Lady May's character slaps Carissa. Now, now, I can't even wait till I get to the reviews, but the slap in that scene was comical it, it wasn't even I'll get to that at the end but 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 as they're having their little tussle Bishop walks in and says oh you guys are talking y'all have made a mess that's great you know and Carissa plays it off and says well yeah we talked a little bit you know and she gives Bishop a little kiss and she leaves the room and we have Bishop that tells Lady May you know I've given some thought about it and I'm not gonna go speak. You know, I listened to a past sermon and they told me, it told me in my heart that I need to stay here and I need to work here and, and be of assistance here in this presence. And if you don't want me to go, then I'm not gonna go. And you know, Lady May get, gets what she wants and she even has a little giggle like, oh, you know, I'm glad he's not going. I, I can't believe that actually worked, okay. Jacob gets to Dante's party and he sees that Dante has a Confederate flag. He's waving it around. He's just like, I'm in the mood for some barbecue and we're going to burn this flag. And everybody has the cameras out and they're, they're filming the whole thing. And he's preparing to, to throw it in the fire. And Jacob tries to stop him and he's just like, hey man, you got to stop doing this. You know, you got all these people looking at you and people are looking at him like, why is this old man trying to stop him from what he's doing? And you know, what's the deal? And he says, oh, so you want to, you want to try to take it from me? He starts to shake him up with the flag and he's trying to cross him over and break his ankle so he can put it in the fire. And as he's doing that, which was so random, we have <laughs> two white uh, plane, uh, plane mates or whatever you call it, players that are on his team that just so happen to walk in and to the party. Okay, and they walk in and they say, oh, you know, what are we doing? What are y'all doing? And more of this stuff again. And of course, one of his friends says, you know, you should speak. You know, you should talk, you know, because you, you always on the bench. And the white guy punches him in the face. Once again, a punch that was more comical 
uh, than a theatrical moment in the episode. It just it just wasn't executed well. But anyway, and that starts to fight. And as they're fighting, Jacob is trying to separate the fight. But people are taking pictures and people are taking, you know, photos of the, of the situation. And we see Jacob. And from the photos, you can't conclude if he's fighting, if he's breaking it up. Is he in the middle? You don't know. So the photos are a bad thing. The videos are a bad thing terrible situation and Zora is there just in complete shock like what a mess that I've got my daddy in this is terrible Jacob gets home later and tells Carissa hey how you doing and she tells him well you know the board meeting went a little bit over like where you been he's like Carissa you ain't been watching the news like all the stuff that's been going on with Dante it it was a mess and since that happened, you know, the Red Devils, they fired me because Dante is in some mess. And I thought to myself, they fired you because of something he did? But anyway, I'll get to that in the reviews. But anyway, and he says, well, with all of that, since they let me go, we're going to have to hold off on that house. And the anger you see in Carissa's character, like, I just talked all that trash about leaving this house to your mama. I was ready to go. I'm thinking about furniture. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. And we're going to have to stay here. Carissa is getting deeper and deeper into a hole of I'm done with this entire family. I'm over it. The final scene, Grace goes up to her mom and she looks troubled. And Lady May says, you know, what's up with that face? Something bothering you? And Grace says, it's just about my son. And we see a shot of Lady May's face and we fade to black. So now let's get to my critical reviews so far. There are so many things about this show that I am continuously not enjoying. For one, the writing has become more vivid that it's lazy writing. The writing is not, it's not taking its time to develop characters, to develop situations, to build emotion of who people are. It's very soap opera-esque and it becomes more soap opera-esque with every episode. The casting has been kind of, uh, the acting has been, uh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we have, <laughs> come on now. We, we got the seasoned actors that are in this. I mean, we, we have them, uh, uh, Lady May, Bishop, you know, the lady who plays Grace, she's no stranger to Broadway, but there are sprinkles of other characters that are pulling down the seasoned cast. And just like us, they're invested in this show, so it's not like they can say, I hate this writing, I'm out. I mean, they can, but <laughs> I feel like I'm actually continuing these reviews because I've already invested so much with the show. And I wanna see how it ends, and I wanna see how the script continues to develop. Like, I get it, but I honestly feel that this season should be the last season. Season four should be the last season. Without a doubt, do not go past season five. And the reason why I say that is, let's hypothetically say there is a season five, okay? What possibilities could be in season five, but yet more things that they could run into with running a church. And then it starts to get into this repetition of another problem and family drama and blah, blah, blah. Another situation, family drama and blah, blah, blah. It becomes very predictable. And then it gets to the point where it's unenjoyable. Watching this episode, I was just rolling my eyes and just like, oh my goodness, I wish I could just hurry up and fast forward through many parts. With certain acting scenes wouldn't even fly in student films. For one, the punch during the fight, the slap between Lady May and Carissa, it was more comical than drama. I didn't take it seriously. 
I didn't see anger or sadness in certain scenes that didn't pull me in. When AJ was expressing how he felt that his mother was doing more for the homeless, doing more for strangers than him, I, I really hate to say this because I'm sure that the gentleman is a great actor and he's on TV and I'm not. <laughs> but the acting with certain characters in certain areas seems very choppy. And there's it's emotionless. It's just like I'm watching, you know, some random stuff on TV. Not like, this is a drama series. When this series first started, you could tell that the writing developed each character and we slowly were either pulled into either liking the character not liking that character this is a mysterious character i don't know about that one it's just very rushed and ooh, what can we say in this episode that's going to top the last episode that's a little bit more drama and ooh, it just seems very um i'm not amazed and i'm not shocked by certain things that are happening and it's becoming very predictable as i'm watching the show i'm like oh yes this is going to happen oh yeah and it, and everything starts to happen that i'm thinking of now i don't know if that's because i'm a seasoned viewer of certain shows uh i i, I like to look at things that are very diverse i'm a huge game of thrones fan but i'll look at the shows that are completely different the dark uh, the, the the jim henson's uh, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, and I'm watching Green Greenleaf. I mean, I watch a very diversified uh, uh, genre of shows, but it's something about this season that is it's making me not want to watch it. <laughs> and it's probably just me. Um, let me know what you think, but uh, casting is a little off. With Dante's character, is this a Okay, whether it's a college team or a professional team, Dante physically doesn't sell me that he's either one. He doesn't sell me that he's a college ball player or an NBA player. His physique, his height, he looked like he was the same height as Zara. Like, it didn't look, not saying he's got to be seven feet tall and muscles popping out of his shirt, he didn't look like a ball player. He didn't look like he's a professional ball player. He looked 12. He looked, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's something missing. It's something missing. And I think the something missing is the writing has gotten a little lazy. The casting is not crisp. And I don't know if I feel that way because I'm watching, I hate to say it, shows where the writing is a little bit more unpredictable I don't know how to state it but I'm really every episode I'm less interested and the only reason why I am continuing to watch it is curiosity I've already in, invested so much into the show I would love to see how it all ends I would love to see the decisions that are made with this harmony and hope I would love to see if charity can finally find her peace I would love to see if grace is just like I'm done with this church stuff it wasn't for me I mean what do you think if you think I'm wrong Please don't drag me too much in the comments. <laughs> but that's the way I'm feeling. And I didn't feel excited to watch this episode. Ooh, I wonder what's going to happen next. I didn't feel that at all. I felt like, let me watch this because I've invested my time. I've invested my energy into watching it. Now it's just a matter of I can't stop watching it because I want to know how it all ends. And that's how I'm feeling. I'm still going to finish this season. My honest opinion, I do think that season four needs to be the end. Um, but looking at how many episodes are in this season, there's a ton of episodes. And it's just, there's a lot of episodes this season. And we're only on five. So this can be the last season. To go on to five or six wouldn't make any sense. Uh, because there's only so many more issues you can bring in the church and then people don't like it and it's going to happen and da, da 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 and over and over again. Now, I don't want this to get too lengthy. 
here's a perfect example of how you can throw away your audience by having awesome reviews, starting off great, and then it fizzles. The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead started out super amazing, super amazing, super amazing. The number one thing that caused the viewers to go like this, not only the writing, but you're stretching out a plot so far and you just, it's just like, when is this gonna end? It's just the repetition and more enemies and fighting zombies and how we're gonna, it just kept, it keeps going and keeps going and going and going and going. And they should have ended it at a, a certain point, but because they wanted to keep it going and because of the fan base, it just dried out. People got exhausted from watching the show. That's how I feel when I watch Greenleaf. And the people that are invested still with The Walking Dead are watching it for the same thing that I just mentioned. They've invested years of their lives watching the show. So they want to know how it is, whether I like it or not. I'm watching it and I just want to know. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Don't drag me in the comments. I got a feeling like I'm about to get dragged. I'm probably going to have some gung-ho Greenly fans go off on me. But I'm being honest, and I'm giving my review, and I'm giving it from a, a very diversified portfolio of things that I watch and of writing. Now, if they're going in that direction to make it more soap opera-ish, then go for it. And I will know the next season that maybe the season season five of Greenleaf isn't for me. I can say this is where I stop with the show, right? So maybe certain shows or the energy of OWN is that style of writing. I completely understand that and saying, well, OWN is known for the have and have nots and this show. and da, da, da. So this is this style of writing. If you don't like it, don't watch this network. I get that. If that's the direction that they're going with the show, I understand. It's just something has changed the writing has tweaked the casting has tweaked it's it feels rushed and we're only in this episode we're only in episode five and it feels super rushed to me it feels like we're not gonna take the time to develop this story we let's just hurry up and say blah 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 hurry up we're just gonna hurry up and get that we're not gonna develop dante we're not gonna develop aj we're not gonna develop Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hopefully, after this review. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. I also encourage you to look at other reviews that are on my page. I want people to invest in diversifying what they watch. Check out the introduction of the Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang and American Saga, introducing you to that series. Check out the Netflix original uh, series of Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Watch the introduction video of that. Watch the introduction video of The Mass Singer on Fox. Introduce yourself to new shows to, to introduce your mind and palate to things you might watch. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.